Hey guys, how's it going? AK Moto here. Today I thought I'd bring you guys a quick video on what will go wrong in a two-stroke crankshaft assembly just to kind of spread some knowledge upon this. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be mostly talking about two-stroke cranks. Now I know some of this stuff will transfer over to four-strokes as well, but most of my experience is in uh, two-stroke engines, not four-stroke. Most of my experience is in two-stroke engines so far, uh, and that's what I know and love best right now. So we may be talking about that. Uh, again, most of this stuff will carry over to four-stroke cranks, but some of it won't because there are quite a few design differences in most four-stroke crankshaft assemblies. But uh, yeah, here we're going to be talking about two-stroke cranks and uh, what goes wrong and why they need replacing, when they need replacing, that general kind of thing. So before we actually talk about the what goes wrong in the two-stroke crank assembly, first we're going to familiarize ourselves with the actual parts of a two-stroke crankshaft assembly here. So let's get started. Alright guys, your two-stroke crankshaft assembly is actually simpler than most people think. Here we have one off of an 85 again. But here we have our two crank webs right here. We have our connecting rod, our main, or our, sorry, our big end bearing sits right in here with two thrust washers and our crank pin. And then our small end bearings over here. And I can actually better illustrate it with this little guy. So this is a connecting rod. We have our big end and our little end, and then our big end bearing sits in here and our little end bearing sits in here. Now I'm pretty sure you guys can understand why they call this a connecting rod because it connects our, our uh, crankshaft assembly, our two webs of our crank, to our piston. Our piston would actually go right here if you guys uh, know what the inside of a two-stroke motor looks like. I'll try and put a photo up here if I can find one, but this connects to your piston, this connects to your cylinder, or sorry, your crank webs. I don't know why I say cylinder webs, your crank webs, and that's why they call it a connecting rod. It's just simply connecting. Um, here we have, again, our big end and small end. They call this a big end bearing or a big end of the connecting rod because you can see the hole is bigger. This side's a small end because this side is smaller. I'm pretty sure that'll be pretty easy to understand. Here we have our bearing. This is actually the uh, big end bearing. This is the cage here. And then we have all these little tiny needles, needle bearings, kind of like linkage bearings. And they'll all sit in here. And this whole assembly will sit right in here inside of our connecting rod. And then we have our crank pin. It's just a little metal pin. I don't know, you know, there's not a whole lot to talk about in a little metal cylinder like this. It'll sit something like this, just like this in your crankshaft assembly. Again, this one's kind of mocked up, but we have a connecting rod, our crank pin, our big end bearing, which is composed of these little needles here, these little bearings, and then the cage here. And then we have our two thrust washers here, which sit at each side of the connecting rod big end just like this and there we go as it fall apart fell apart as it fell apart fall apart whatever so yeah again just a quick recap our connecting rods right here we have our crank pin our two uh, crankshaft webs here then we have our big end bearing a small end bearing would go here which you'd replace when doing a top end our two thrust washers and uh, yeah they're really pretty simple assemblies once you really break them down they're not that hard to understand essentially what happens in your motor is when your piston's coming around boom an explosion it shoves this down and then goes back up in a two-stroke the explosion will happen every time the piston goes to the top and uh yeah so boom comes back up boom it's really simple to simple concept to grasp guys and uh I'm not gonna sit here and bore you guys with that too much but now that we know the basic parts of a crank we can now dive into what fails and what goes wrong in these crankshaft assemblies and when do they need replacing. Now you'll know right away when a two-stroke crankshaft needs to be replaced because you'll hear a terrible sound coming from the motor, something like this. And what you guys just heard there on video is basically play in our big end bearing here. Now what happens once your crankshaft goes bad, these little cylinders that the bearing is made of, these little round pieces of metal will actually develop flat spots and look less like a perfect cylinder here. They'll develop flat spots and then this will develop play very quickly here in your connecting rod. You can hear up and down, or you can hear up and down. You can see this crank moves up and down. If you pay attention here where the big end of the connecting rod here is, you can see it physically moves up and down between the webs here. This is a crank that was completely toasted. I took it out of a YZ85 and this one fully went out. Um, but yeah, this is not what you want to see. Basically, most of the time in your two-stroke crankshaft, your big end bearing will go out and it'll form a little bit of up and down play, something like this. 
Now you don't want to confuse that with side to side play. Side to side play in a two stroke crankshaft is completely normal. You can see here, this one has a little bit of side to side. And even this one I just freshly rebuilt has a little bit of side to side. Side to side play is completely normal. You want to be careful not to mistake side to side with up and down play when you are inspecting your two stroke crankshaft. So you guys know that up and down play here in the crank is a very bad thing, but what causes this up and down play? Now, like I said earlier, in the big end bearing over time, these little cylinders that the bearing is made up of will form flat spots. Now, this is mainly due to normal wear. Uh, this can be accelerated by poor air filter maintenance, but it is completely normal for a crankshaft to wear out even with normal maintenance. In my personal YZ125 2018, I got 130 hours out of the OEM crank, and that is with uh, motocross riding where you're holding it wide open. And uh, if you're a woods rider, or you're a trail rider, and you're not as hard on your motor, you're probably going to get more life out of your motor or your crank assembly versus a guy out on the MX track where you're just holding the bike wide open in the meat of the power because, well, that's how the bikes are made to be ridden. These small bore two strokes, you got to hold them wide, man. You just got to go. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like I was saying, it is completely normal for these to wear out after a while. Uh, again, depending on your riding condition, what type of riding you do, uh, what type of bike you have, basic factors like that will go into uh, determining how long your crank will last. But generally, a trail rider is going to get more life out of a crank than a really fast MX guy who's wide open all the time. So like I said, poor air filter maintenance can definitely drastically reduce the life of your connecting rod's bearings. Uh, another thing could be poor lubrication. If for some reason you run some gas that is unmixed with two-stroke premix by whatever... Whatever mistake, whatever happens there, that can definitely decrease the life of these bearings. Now, another way these big end bearings can go out is actually through corrosion. Now, this is very, very rare. Your typical dirt bike rider is not going to really have to worry about this as long as you have premix in your crankcase. But this is more of a thing to happen in a vintage engine or an engine that hasn't been ran in a very, very long time. What can happen is these little needles, needle bearings here, can actually develop corrosion on the sides. So they'll essentially get stuck in one position and then when you go to start the motor instead of these rotating around they start to wear and develop little flat spots sometimes on one side most of the time it'll be on both sides but they'll develop flat spots and the uh, crank will go out soon after that once these little needles develop flat spots and once you can start to get play you can feel on the connecting rod uh, it's pretty much game over from there it's basically a ticking time bomb but again that is actually really really rare to happen I personally have never had corrosion uh, cause the big end bearing to come out or go out, but that's something that can happen. Now there's one other way that I see cranks go out, two stroke cranks, and this is a little less common on your stock motors. Um, and this doesn't happen a whole lot nowadays, but what can actually happen is your connecting rod itself will break or snap in half. Now, normally in your normal, well-maintained, unmodified stock engine, this won't really happen. You don't really have to worry about this happening if you use name brand connecting rods and stuff, but there are a few cases when this can happen. Number one thing would be a manufacturing defect in your connecting rod. Now again, nowadays with technology and with the standards parts are made, honestly this is pretty rare that you'll find a manufacturing de defect in your connecting rod, but again it can happen. Uh, if for some reason your connecting rod has a manufacturing defect and it busts in half, that's a real bummer. But again, really rare that that'll happen. One of the main ways I see connecting rods actually snapping is actually just due to an overbore uh, or a big bore kit. Now what can happen is when you get big bore kits, they will come with bigger pistons, of course, to accompany a bigger cylinder. Now bigger pistons are going to have more material and they're going to be, well, physically bigger and heavier. Now when you're increasing your piston mass, it's a really good idea to get a stronger upgraded crank assembly, or at least a connecting rod assembly. Uh, when you're increasing the piston mass, the rotational mass, that general kind of thing. Now, what a lot of people will do, uh, and I see this quite commonly, uh, a lot of people will just slap a big bore kit, so that's a bigger cylinder, a bigger piston, onto a stock or aftermarket crank that hasn't been upgraded and just run it. Now, technically this does work sometimes, but you are kind of playing a guessing game because connecting rod manufacturers use this thing called a safety factor. Basically, when they manufacture these connecting rods, they build them stronger than they need to be for the intended purpose. So when they manufactured this rod, 
they made it stronger than it really needed to be. Now, when engineers are designing an engine, they're not gonna put a connecting rod into the engine that's just barely strong enough to you know, withstand the forces inside of the engine. They're gonna make one that's actually a little bit stronger than they need. So that way, they have a little bit of a buffer, a little bit of a safety factor. So this connecting rod is very unlikely to snap in your stock engine. Now, again, when you go in increasing the piston weight, increase the piston mass, put a big bore kit, you're you're really adding to the stress that the connecting rod sees. And a lot of the times you can get away with a big bore kit on a connecting rod on a stock or a, you know, a good quality aftermarket connecting rod. Uh, now a really good engine builder will know that they need to upgrade the connecting rod if they do anything crazy big bore. But a lot of the times you actually can get away with it without having to do anything too crazy. I don't recommend it. Um, now most people won't really have any issues when they go in and put a big bore kit in their motor without doing anything special connecting rod wise. And that is just mainly due to the safety factor. Again, these are made to be a little bit stronger than they need to in their stock use. And uh, yeah, they're kind of taking advantage of that safety factor when you put on a big bore, more stresses are applied to the rod. But of course, when you're stressing out your parts more, they're gonna wear a little quicker. So that's one thing about a big bore kit, but we're not getting into that. So here I'm trying to stay relatively on topic. Uh, yeah, one of the main reasons a connecting rod will snap other than manufacturing defects will be because of a bib, bib bore, a big bore kit. And uh, yeah, that's just essentially increasing the stresses on the connecting rod. And some connecting rods will fail because they're not designed to be handling those type of stresses. Now your connecting rod, besides actually breaking, can also bend. Now a lot of the times this will happen in a hydro-locking engine where the piston, the whole engine sucks in a lot of water. The piston tries to compress it, but the piston can't compress water because water is not that compressible. And the connecting rod will just be the weak point in that link and it'll bend. And that actually happens quite a lot in hydro-locked engines that are really badly hydro-locked. But uh, yeah, that's just another way that the connecting rod can be damaged, not really broken, but damaged. Of course, you don't want to run a bent connecting rod. That would not be very good. A ticking time bomb. Another thing that can make a connecting rod bend is again, uh, the connecting rod withstanding forces that it was not designed to withstand. Again, that's another example of the big bore, a bigger piston that the connecting rod was not designed to work with. And uh, yeah, it's more likely that the connecting rod will actually just break at that point, but they can bend sometimes. And by that point, you should probably consider yourself lucky and buy a lottery ticket because generally they'll just break. So I hope this was quick and relatively simple to understand. Now, there's a million other things that can go wrong, or maybe not a million, but there's plenty of other things that can go wrong in your crank assembly, but these are just the main two I have seen. Uh, again, your connecting rod snapping, which is oh, pretty rare if you're on a stock motor, um, but most of the time, nine times out of ten, it's going to be your big end bearing that says bye-bye. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I just wanted to keep this quick, relatively simple. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, if I missed anything, if you guys want to add anything or correct me on anything I may have gotten wrong. Uh, just write it down in the comments, I read them all, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces!